Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. So both Lambda and EKS Fargate has some similarities. So in this video, we are going to look at some of the differences between Lambda and EKS Fargate. So before we get started, let's do a quick recap on what is serverless. So for a service to be serverless, it has to have these four properties. Number one, no servers to provision or manage, either physical or virtual. Number two, it will automatically scale with usage. You do not have to configure any additional auto scaling group or any such things. Number three, you will never pay for idle. You will only pay for what you use. And number four, it is inherently highly available. So there are a lot of serverless services outside of Lambda because any AWS service that satisfies these four properties is a serverless service. So what are some of these services? DynamoDB, API Gateway, Step Functions, and Amazon SQS. However, AWS Lambda is the crown jewel of serverless. AWS Lambda is a compute service that lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. What is EKS Fargate? You define and deploy pods without any worker nodes. There is still a control plane and that is managed by AWS. And Fargate works with Amazon EKS as well as Amazon ECS. But for this video, we are going to compare Lambda with Kubernetes Fargate or EKS Fargate. So let's look at differences between Lambda and EKS Fargate. So for Lambda, it has inherent integration with other AWS services as event source. For example, if you want to trigger a Lambda every time there is an object put in S3 bucket or there is some messages in SQS queue or SNS messages, it is very easy to do so. At this time of recording, Lambda integrates around 50 AWS services as event source. EKS Fargate does not have inherent event integration. It needs to come via ingress. Next, Lambda can be exposed using multiple options such as API Gateway, Application Load Balancer. For EKS Fargate, Classic and Network Load Balancers are not supported. Pods can be exposed using ingress. Next, Lambda has mature integration for logging, tracing, monitoring. It integrates directly with CloudWatch, X-Ray, etc without you needing to do a lot of tinkering. For EKS Fargate, you have to take some additional steps. Uh, daemon sets are not supported. You need to run this logging, tracing, monitoring services as sidecar. So you need some reworking uh, for EKS Fargate. Lambda is able to run stateful applications using the very recent integration feature with Elastic File System or EFS. EKS Fargate stateful apps are not recommended at this time. For Lambda, maximum memory allowed is 3 GB for each function. CPU and network are allocated proportionally. For EKS Fargate, maximum pod size can have 4 vCPU and 30 GB memory per pod. If you decide to attach a VPC to your Lambda, it can work in public and private subnet. EKS Fargate currently works only in private subnet. Lambda maximum runtime is 15 minutes. EKS Fargate has no maximum runtime limit. Talking a little bit on the cost, uh, so we have a AWS Lambda pricing calculator. I have given the link here. You can just put in number of executions, allocated memory and estimated execution time, and then you can get the total cost for the Lambda for the month. So in this example, I'm showing number of execution is 600. Per month, allocated memory is 2 gigabyte, and estimated execution time is 10 minutes, and the total cost comes around $12 per month. On the right, we are calculating the cost for EKS Fargate. I'm not going to go detail into the cost analysis because I covered it in a separate cost video for Fargate. Please refer to that video if you want to dive deep on the calculation. But for the same configuration, uh, 20 pods using one vCPU, two gigabyte of memory each and running for 10 minutes every day of the month, the cost comes around $77 per month. But this will change based on the volume. Uh, so don't think Lambda will always come cheaper. Uh, so whenever you are working on an actual application, uh, estimate the cost using the traffic, uh, the duration and all the other factors and then decide. So there is no silver bullet. Sometimes a Lambda will be appropriate to use. Sometimes Fargate will be more appropriate to use. Uh, if you are moving legacy application to AWS, 
if you want to go to lambda route, you need to refactor your code for lambda. And if you are trying to go Fargate route, you need to dockerize your code for running any case Fargate. If your team does not have experience either in Lambda or Kubernetes, a learning curve is steeper for EKS Fargate than serverless. For high sensitivity project, Lambda is preferred uh, because all serverless services are FedRAMP high and EKS is FedRAMP moderate at this point. But as we saw in the comparison table, EKS Fargate does have some advantages such as no runtime limit, way higher CPU and memory allocation per pod, etc. So always choose right tool for right job. It's not really one service versus another service. There is no magic pill. So you have to look out for where you want to use what. So ideal application will probably have a mix of Lambda, regular EKS worker nodes, regular EKS Fargate and other AWS services. So that's the video guys and girls. Just a quick announcement, I have created discount coupons for all my courses. I have four courses now. So one is the DynamoDB for AWS Certified Database Specialty. That's on plural site. If you have membership, you can go watch it. It's included in the membership. And my course on Kubernetes, uh, serverless and cloud formation uh, with DevOps uh, in all, all those areas. Uh, so I have given the link in the description. Check them out if you're interested. If not, no worries at all. If you like this video, do all the YouTube stuff, like this video, uh, comment, subscribe. It really helps this channel grow. And I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.